So the British actually helped the Mexicans in this. Well, then you helped the Texians too, because So some of our flags from the area. Projectiles and all sorts of fun things here. The Kyphus ham knife, we believe, is what is referred to as the first Bowie knife. Okay. So it's just an ugly butcher knife kind of looking thing. But it was given to Kyphus Ham, who is a friend of James Bowie. He's actually buried here in San Antonio, oh, wow. Kyphus is. So we believe that with the sandbar fight where he gets his reputation from, this is probably what he had in, hidden in his boot to defend himself. So that one is James Bowie, who is you know, famous for being here. He and his brother, Reason, were doing a lot of things for in Louisiana, going up and down the Mississippi River, and very crazy kind of things. But that he ended up getting on the wrong side of this man by the name of Wright. And so they had been trying to work against each other and have having some issues. They ended up being instrumental in a duel that yep. two other people were having. Not oh, okay. even these guys, two other guys. Wright was a friend of one guy and Louis was a friend of the other guy. So they went just to observe. Of course, duels are illegal. Mm -hmm. And so they tended to do them on sandbars out in the middle of the Mississippi River, near because they're at Louisiana, because that's kind of no man's land. Yep. So it's not Texas, it's not Louisiana, it's just kind of out there. And I think Gay's area. Alabama, I guess, is on the other side is with the way the river is. But anyway, so they're out there on the sandbar, and these guys pick pistols. They shoot at each other and miss. So they reload, because they're single shot, step back 10 more steps than what they had, shoot at each other and they miss. So that is considering, okay, honor has been alleviated here, we're good, and we can all go home. Okay. Well, there was a big enough crowd that had come along to watch this. They're like, no, we want blood. <laughs> and just this whole melee breaks out. Well, Wright decides this is a great time to get Bowie. And he comes up after him, he's got a sword cane. So he pulls the cane open and gets the sword out. And he ends up, he stabs Bowie in the chest several times. Non-fatal wounds, but still he's bleeding pretty bad. And since Bowie had an idea of what was going on that something might happen his brother had encouraged him to have this ugly old butcher knife in his boot and he reaches up swings it right and ends up killing him wow so it it's takes him a job. while to recover because he's got you know hole in his lungs and he's got just you know, in his chest they missed his heart but it takes him a while to recover and that is before he ends his up hair. coming to to texas yeah Oh, uh, he ends up marrying into one of the lo local families and ends up becoming the heir for the entire fortune that this family had. So it's one of our local Hispanic families, very, very well off. His wife, Ursula, was, I believe, an only child. She had two cousins that they were all raised together, and the three girls just referred to themselves as sisters. And so you take turns on whose house they were staying at and stuff like that. 1833, the family is down in Monclova, and James is still up here and cholera hits oh, and no. wipes out the family. So his in-laws, his wife, and their two children all were killed from cholera in 1833. Crikey. So it's kind of funny if you watch like the John Wayne movie, mm -hmm. there's a guy who comes up, he has like a big sombrero, puts a piece of paper in it, throws the sombrero over the wall. And it's like, James, your wife and family have been killed with cholera down in Monclova. And he's like breaking down and everything. It's like, dude, that was three years ago. <laughs> you know? Put your <laughs> You're really not thinking on how long it takes to get information from one place to another. It's not three years. So that's, you know, it's kind of fun. Yeah. This is a cool knife that has actually a antler. Oh yeah. As the handle on that. That's the Henry Shively Bowie knife. So Bowie knives become kind of a thing long after Bowie is actually killed. And even in the U.S. Civil War, we've got like swords that are getting cut down and called. Bowie knives. Oh. So it's got to be eight inches long. Cyril's is one of the guys that you can see there that has a huge collection of Bowie knives that he ends up making for various people. Vietnam era. But even today, our U.S. Army has K-Bar knives. Right. And they're considered Bowie knives. Me not knowing anything, I'd want one of these like big swords. But from what you were saying, I think I now want one of these little Bowie knives. Isn't that kind of, it's kind of fun. Spada Ancha, which is called a Mexican short sword. It's really not that short 
sword, but that's what it is. Sam Houston sword with the uh, eagle on the end, which is pretty neat. Oh yeah. And just an officer sword and things like that. So there's a bunch that are really neat. Santa Ana sword here. Brown vest is kind of typical what the Mexican army is using here. Mexican military brown vests, they're, they're basically the same. So Great Britain has brown vests for over a hundred years in production. So American Revolutionary War, War of 1812, Napoleonic battles, all sorts of fun stuff, which means you guys build up a whole bunch of debt because of all the battles that in army and, or wars that your army has been doing. So they sell these muskets to anybody who wants to buy them as long as you're not French or American. So the Mexican army buys thousands of these guns to arm their soldiers and they're stockpiling them here. So the British actually helped the Mexicans in this scenario. Well, then you help the, the, the Texians too because the Texans came in in December and took control of this property, yep. kicked the Mexican army out, and made them leave their toys behind. That so makes those it feel better. brown vest muskets, the armaments that go along with it, and all the cannons that they were stockpiling here were used against the Mexican soldiers right. in the Battle of the Alamo. Okay, so there we go. We See, were there's a British connection. Yeah, we you helped. are here. We helped in the Alamo. <laughs> this one was sold to a family in Nacogdoches as he was heading this way. They adapted it for cap lock and ended up not taking really good care of it. So the end of it really got rusted up and fouled. So they ended up having to cut it down. So that's why it's a little bit shorter. The Dickert rifle has a story behind it too. And uh, that is the only gun that we can verify was used in the Battle of the Alamo and again in the Battle of San Jacinto. Oh. So after the Battle of the Alamo is over, Mexican army is actually getting some locals to come help clear things out, clean things up, help tear things down. And one of the men who was helping with that saw this, kind of stashed it and got it out of the property without being caught. So he had it at his house. And one of his friends was saying, hey, I'm going to help Sam Houston over in the other, whatever he's dealing with over there, which becomes the Battle of San Jacinto on the east side of Houston. And the guy says, well, here, take this with you, you know, go with God or whatever he wanted to tell him. But he went over there and helped fight in that battle using that weapon. So has the name, like because Sam Houston, is that why Houston is called Houston? Yes. Oh, yes. okay. I thought it might have been. If you go to New York City, they have Houston Street. Oh, and okay. it is actually ancestors of Sam Houston. Oh. Fun historical photos of here that were going on. So photograph photography itself really is not going to get too much going until like the 1850s. Mm -hmm. We had a bar right next to it. That's the church right there, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Christmas decorations, they actually had that going. That's probably about 1922 because I think that's when the roof was getting put on. This is with the U.S. Army and you can actually see water damage from flooding. Oh, okay. Already up that and you can see it even more so right there. On the side of the church, beyond the bar, was actually a police substation. Oh. So if you got drunk, you didn't yeah. have far to go <laughs> to get, to get put up. away. <laughs> yeah, get locked up and stuff like that. Amelia Earhart came. General Funston, we actually have a Funston Drive or Funston Avenue, I remember how it is. That's, it looks like 1920s, because I think the Ford dealership in back. Roy Rogers, of course, you know, the Fess Parker era with everybody in their coonskin caps and things like that. We have guys who do wear those in like August. And I'm like, oh my gosh, my head is so hot. I think it's World War II, that one. And you can go right up to the front of the church and park. Right up to the front. There's Kennedy. Yep. Nixon. Mm -hmm. So this is John Wayne after his movie came out. Oh, really? So we got uh, like Fabian and Patrick Wayne and Richard Widmark, Gerald Ford, that's Rolling Stones. Oh, really? Yeah, Ronald Sanders. Wow. <laughs> the KFC himself. Yes, exactly. Miss Congeniality. Oh, is movie. it? Yeah. I was going to ask if it. Like, Sa that Sandra film. actually lives in Austin. Oh, really? Yeah. If you take, if you take the boat tour, the Riverwalk yeah. tour. They actually point out the stage where this particular scene was shot. Ah, we might have to try that then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so over in Afghanistan, we actually had an Alamo unit. Oh. And so they had their bell, they had their little mat that went underneath it and everything, but when they left, they rang the bell and then they brought it and gave it to us here. Put it so back. Kind of neat. Uh, we get a few things that don't really necessarily have anything to do with the Alamo, but people are like, okay, you're doing such a great job take care of my stuff too. Yep. So, you know, we got the posters, 
that have fun things about the Alamo and the USS Alamo. Of course, we have that too. So the banjo is from our sesquicentennial, so 150 years of statehood, and it's very, very Texas, very Texas. I'm looking to see. So the state, boots, guns, cowboy hats, longhorns, the Alamo, that type of thing. But 1836 to 1936, or 1986 is 150 years. And the backside is actually pretty as well, which oh, I'm sad it? we can't see that too. Carved coconut shell from Cuba. I'm like, what does that have to do with the Alamo? But it's cool. But it's here. Um, you know, John Wayne's Screen Directors Guild Award from 1960. Um, just kind of fun stuff. But I love this table. This is an interactive table where you can look through the collection that we have and then like click on it. Wow. Oh, it gives you all the so information. Fess Parker gave us a gun and we believe it was the gun that he used in the filming of his Davy Crockett. Oh. So stuff that he did on so you know, back. And you can go on and you can see oh, there's, there's, our, there's our banjo. But the thing is this, you can zoom in and check stuff out. So Austin, Bowie, Crockett, oh, you know, and everything. So it's kind of neat to be able to go and play with that. So this is our document room. And so each of the drawers have oh, various nice artifacts. So that's a probate notice for William B. Travis, signed by Joseph Barnard, survivor Goliad. You and I'm just pulling fingers. random stuff out because I don't know what's in any of these drawers. Alana, would you like to open a drawer? Carefully. They're really heavy. You want to help me? Do you want to you open pull? the drawer? You want to come pull? Shall we do it together? Come on, help come my pull. mate. Let's pull. Mm. Here oh. we go. Great job. Oh, look, yeah, you found a necklace. So that's a rosary. Garnizo de Antonio Geronimo de la Mier in regards to the Spanish Inquisition. Yeah. 1726. Wow. There we go. We got Andrew Kent receives payment from Henry Bridges and takes on his $38 debt to Richard Heath. Uh, Andrew Kent was one of the men who fought and died here. And then promised for payment to R.T. Higginbotham, signed by Juan Seguin. Juan Seguin was born and raised here in San Antonio. Mayor of San Antonio uh, was actually a courier, so he was away from the property for our battle, fought at the Battle of San Jacinto. And do you want to pull that one out? It might be too heavy. You want to pull out? Or do you want to do a lower one lower so one? you could say? Should we do this one? Oh, look. So a mili military commission for Jose Maria Larios. That's good, isn't it? They did drawings. And we have paintings. These are done by the uh, Mr. Yena. He's just a really good artist. Likes to hide things in his painting, like scorpions or just like a um, cardinal or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Just rattlesnakes that are hiding in there too sometimes. And they're usually in the corner, but not always. I look at it as kind of a Where's Waldo type <laughs> thing sometimes. But yeah, this is from the northwest corner of the compound, like one of the only trees that was left uh, uh, to be allowed to remain there. It's February, so it, it, we believe it's a pecan, so it would have been without leaves at that point in time anyway. But they tried to basically clear out majority of the, of the trees around it just to make sure they've got clear view all the way around the property kind of a thing. So but that's what, the corner where Travis got killed. Um, they're very lifelike, actually. The yeah, he, did, he does a really, really good job. I love his, his work. Look, Elena, you can see some chickens in this one. Look. But apparently he likes he likes to have like a hawk in it too, yeah. you know? He's got several of those. Yeah. We have statues that are around here. So this is Juan Seguin. Travis is beyond him. Mm -hmm. The guy on horseback is John William Smith, who's one of our couriers. So he's holding like a rolled up piece of paper, yep. kind of a scroll. We have Emily Morgan, which we have the, the Emily hotel. Morgan Hotel. And some question whether or not she actually existed, but you know, <laughs> okay. um, it's Texas. We don't let the truth stand in the way of a good story. <laughs> uh, but she is supposed to be a mulatto woman who was instrumental in keeping Santa Ana busy okay. over in San Jacinto while Sam Houston came over and got them all there during a siesta time. So he was oh, yeah. basically caught with his pants down kind of a thing. And then I'm blanking on his name, but he is a freedman who was married to Def Smith's stepdaughter. And so Def Smith was one of the men who was fighting alongside Sam Houston. He was a, a guide and scout for him. He was deaf 
Oh, that's oh, hence the name. Why he had the name. He married a local Hispanic lady who had two daughters. She was widowed, helped raise the girls, and this was one of the girls' husbands. So he was a freedman. So yeah, it's yeah. both uh, Emily Morgan and this guy is uh, newer to our collection of, okay. of statues that we have here. Susanna Dickinson and David Crockett were back here, but now they're out front, so we've got them. To got to walk around this to earlier. Keep moving. So, yeah people around kind of a Keep thing. Keep you on your so, toes. Yeah. Uh, this is called our Wall of History, and it starts down at the other end with our Spanish information coming to more current time periods, but it's a good way for people to get an idea of what we have as well. So a lot of people, you know, sit and read, or they take pictures and then take them home so they can read them on computer yeah. screens and have a chance to yeah. absorb the information, that type so of thing. There's a lot so. of history and a lot of information. So this is one of our oldest trees on the property. We have a, the huge pecan you can actually see over the top of the church. Oh yeah. Uh, that was planted in 1862. This was actually transplanted here in 1912. Oh. So they believe it was over 40 years old when they moved it. The guy who brought it came from England. His name was Walter Wall or Whale and he was a sailor. Okay, oh. San Antonio doesn't have much need for sailors. <laughs> so he comes up with a new idea of, for a job for him, and that is transplanting established trees. You know, ah. Seedlings are easy to move, but established trees are a lot more difficult. We don't have machinery due today to do that kind mm -hmm. of a thing. So it's all hand dug, hand chopped. Uh, we believe this was acquired somewhere near where the airport is today. Mm -hmm and it was a three-day adventure for him wow. to get it, bring it down here, and get it established in place. It's and it's been growing tree. ever since. So yeah, so live oaks have not really oak tree looking leaves. Mm -hmm. They do produce a lot of acorns and that's what's out front. There's tons of acorns all the time. And right now is about the time that they're starting to fall, but they stay green all, all winter long. And so around March is when they actually do a big dump of their leaves and pop out with brand new ones immediately. Oh. And it's still green. And it's still green. Now my favorite ones though are these, and there's a better one right here to look at. These are my Texas laurels. Ah, uh, okay. Because I am no. Texas laurel. You know? yeah. <laughs> but they have kind of lilac-y flowers that grow, and there should be some seeds around here. They're, they're red. Oh, okay. You would think that they would be showing up really easily, but. We have laurel trees back home, but they're completely different. Yeah, so, so uh, they, they smell like grape Kool-Aid. Oh, flowers do they? Do. Yeah. Wow, I never. Grape Kool-Aid. Grape Kool-Aid. You would think that there's like 45 million little seedlings around here. Is that here a little red one that through usually there? It's like a, it looks a little like a red berry. One. So that's what they look like. Ah. Yeah, so back home as well, the laurel seeds, they're yeah. quite green as well. So completely different looking tree. Well, they're, I mean, when they're fresh, they are green. Oh, okay. And they grow in a little pod. So people are like, what are the peanuts trees up like here? Like this, I see them yeah. up here. Yeah, yeah. like monkey nuts. Yep. Yeah. I won't be allowed to take that home. If you don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Bento Courtyard, because it actually surrounded and attached to the church. Oh. Uh, it was two stories tall, no longer anymore and then twice as long as what we've got today as well. It was the first hospital west of the Mississippi River in 1804 by the, with the Spanish. And inside we have our movie plays on a continual loop. It's only about 17 minutes long and uh, covers those 300 years in the history as well. Come on the inside. Church. Hiya. Thank you. Hi. Okay. So only other original building we have here on the property. It's gone through a lot. So of course it was uh, the Spanish Mission Church. It was under construction. Mm -hmm. uh, the entire time the mission was actually open and active. So we didn't have church out here in the sanctuary, but we had baptistry and confessional rooms. Okay. Were functional. They actually have original ceiling inside. Do you want to see? Okay. We have our flags of the folks who are here that fought and died, where their birthplaces are. So Wales has a representation here, Mexico, Scotland, Ireland, Germany, England. We've got England. And Denmark. England. So you have to go get the English flag. Yeah, go get. There we go. It's 
just there. Yay! Right? The people said how small this building is, but I didn't actually feel as small as I thought it was going to be. It's better on days when it's not quite as, as busy. busy. Yeah, it's a very busy day, isn't it? <laughs> now, some of our flags are missing out of the ones that we would have had here because we've got moisture monitoring going on, so that's kind of taken the space of some of our areas that would have had flags up. So Alabama, Arkansas, Connecticut, okay. Delaware, you know, they're over here, Missouri, Mississippi. New York, New Jersey, I can't remember who all this is over on this side. So we've got a few of them, you know, our international ones, as well as some of our state flags. But yeah, there's a lot more that are missing because of the moisture monitoring going on right now. First roof that got put on, we can see that down here. So this is what they believe the church looked like post-battle, post-Texas independence kind of a thing. It's not in great shape. You can see the little tree right there. Yep. And if you turn around and right above the uh, baptistry over there, there's a dark spot in the kind of squarish white. Yep. That little dark spot is in the same spot as that tree is. Oh, okay. So the tree was growing out of the wall right there. But the first roof uh, was just a wooden peaked roof. And that's the U.S. Army that puts that on around 1850. And they added a second floor to it. So you can see the cutouts on the columns mm -hmm. where that floor went across. So you can go up and see the little model that we have up there if you want to come. Yeah. So not quite as big as the Phil yeah. Collins version but you know, it gives you an idea. So we had a cannon ramp going up to that wall. Mm -hmm. And that's where three cannons were in place shooting over during the Battle of the Alamo. Uh, US Army put on the windows after they came in years later. And so anything that has the wooden headers on it, that is US Army. Okay. So there's not a lot that is original as far as windows and things like go. The, the window above the doorway, That's the that one. is uh, original window opening, not original glass and stuff like that. We have a new short movie that goes on over there sharing about how the reconstruction sacristy used to look like and stuff like that. This is the line for it. It's four minutes long. They put about 20 people in at a time. And I think there are folks that don't get to see it by the end of the day because cycling everybody through is kind of crazy. But it is really pretty to see some of the painting as it was way back then. Mm -hmm. When I saw the first week that it came out, yeah. it was, it, this, is, this is lines. Mm -hmm.